That's one of the fascinating things about this collection. It wasn't heard for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. So this is Count Basie, one o'clock jump. The great majority of the people who played it are not alive anymore. The majority of the people who heard it played back then aren't around anymore. It's really, I guess, as close as you can get to a time machine. Between 1936 and 1940, Bill Savory, a studio engineer and jazz fan, recorded about a thousand discs of live performances broadcast over New York radio stations. Though jazz aficionados coveted this treasure trove of singular radio performances, Bill Savory kept his collection of unique arrangements of well-known songs by artists like Count Basie, Benny Goodman, and Cab Calloway to himself for more than 60 years. In April, Savory's heirs turned the discs over to Lauren Schoenberg at the National Jazz Museum in Harlem. But the condition of the discs shocked him. I went to the house, and there were 50 boxes full of discs in various stages of decomposition. Some mold and some, I mean, I mean, some of this stuff should definitely be donated to the National Institute of Health. You know, they might find the cure for, you know, for something in there. But uh, I start looking through it, and I knew right away that I had hit pay dirt. To salvage the music, Schoenberg coaxed renowned audio engineer Doug Pomeroy out of retirement for one last job. He had mentioned that there, some of these discs were not in very good shape. But the damage to some of these discs is beyond anything that I had ever seen before. This, this damage presumably is from water, which caused corrosion of the aluminum. That was a real shock. Here is an example of lacquer which has broken away from other pieces of lacquer and uh, there's no way to fix this. You know, the music is gone forever. For the discs that aren't too far gone, Pomeroy uses an assortment of household cleaning products to remove dirt and mold. You're just trying to get the groove uh, as clean as possible. Any residue that you don't remove that can be removed will translate into surface noise. The next step is to transfer the clean discs and convert the music into digital sound files. Pomeroy plays the discs on a turntable and adjusts the pitch, speed, and amplitude as the music, or something that sounds like music, enters the computer. The end result is often almost listenable. <laughs> I mean, clearly, that's too scratchy. The big job of cleaning up the audio will come later. Pomeroy estimates that the entire job will take at least 10 months. Both Pomeroy and Schoenberg foresee this lost era of jazz history becoming the centerpiece of the National Jazz Museum in Harlem's digital archive. It's just very exciting to, to be taken back to 1937 or 8 and to hear something, knowing that nobody has heard this since then. If what I've heard so far is, is any indication, then, then this is a major discovery. Bill Savory had the most incredible taste, and we are in his debt forever. Because without him, the only people who, were, who heard these performances were the people who were in the ballroom, or the theater, or the radio station when it was created, and the people who heard it come across the air once. And I think it's just so important that it be shared.